Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, and welcome to the Internet Business School Saturday School. Uh, I'm Roger Norris from the Internet Business School. I'm a business manager and coach. Uh, and today on Saturday School, we're going to be looking at privacy first with me, uh, go through um, GDPR and some actions that you need to take, uh, and then I'll be following up next week uh, with some more um details about what it means for you and what forms you have to put on your website and how to do all that. Um, so it is going to be quite an uh, involved subject, uh, but I'm going to break it up over two weeks. So hopefully we can keep you awake um, long enough today, but it's a really important subject. And then a bit later on, uh, we'll have Paul coming on, Paul Shooter, who's our uh, LinkedIn specialist. Um, and it's a really cool um, um, stuff that he, Paul does okay so I need to get cracking because otherwise I will go on too long and there's quite a lot to get through okay so there we are so we're going to go through privacy understanding the global laws uh, because it kind of depends which territory in understand a bit more about GDPR and then find out what actions you need to take okay um I've decided to put a little bit of an obligatory about me slide in because I kind of haven't been doing it recently, but I know there's a, some people that know me, uh, some people that, that don't. I kind of started off in, in restaurants and hospitality uh, in, in my early first career. Uh, and I was running major restaurants in Blue Water for Pizza Express and Giraffe on the South Bank. And I've run hotels that have been in the Sunday Times and the Times Cool Hold Hotel Guide, been in the Tatler. Um, so I've done a lot in hospitality, running big teams and big sites. Uh, and then I had a, a bit of a, a, a stint in the NHS 111, managing uh, all the uh, data analysis uh, for one of the large call centres in Kent, Surrey and Sussex. So dealing with sort of millions and millions of lines of data and making sense of them for the teams. Uh, and then I came across Simon. Uh, and Simon Colson from Internet Business School, and I, I, my wife started working from first at Darling Buds Farm, uh, running all the holiday accommodations, and then I joined and set up his uh, all the booking systems for Darling Buds Farm uh, and ran it for three or four years, uh, and then I've taken on running the Simon's other business, the CV House Storage Centre down in Folkestone, uh, as well as doing sort of six or seven years running the Internet Business School. Um, so I've done quite a lot uh, of varied roles uh, and Internet Business School is a lot, a lot of fun and you're always learning um, and always having a go at new stuff, uh, which is what it's all about. Okay. So let's just click ahead. Slide isn't catching up. There we are. That's better. Uh, just a quick reminder from the last time I was on a couple of weeks ago um, about cookies, because uh, they are important to towards privacy. OK, so uh, just a reminder of what cookies can and can't do. Um, they collect information. They're a little bit of code that sit on your browser uh, whenever you visit a website uh, and they can collect information about you and track your behavior and remember those sort of products and ads, etc. OK. Um, so they are a, a fact of life, um, but the first party cookies are the ones that come from the website owners. They're fine. Uh, it's the third party cookies that are controversial because they are all the advertising data. Okay, And the, the, over the years, those, those cookies have caused a whole lot of privacy issues um, because you're basically giving up quite a lot of information uh, that you not haven't been previously aware of. Okay. So we're going to have a look at how that affected the sort of global climate of legislation and, and where we are now with legislation. OK, what we have to do. OK, so um, the actual sort of first concerns about privacy um, came before uh, the 1968-69. Um, and it actually came in the, uh, the European, European Convention on Human Rights in the 1950s. Uh, which said that everyone has the right to respect for his private and family life, his home and his correspondence. They said that's the foundation of privacy as we know it. Um, and in the late 60s and 70s, early 70s, the European Union and the FTC uh, in America started realising the effect of computers and how much data was being stored. So they started putting legislation um, together um, to... See, see, you know, see if they could control it. Uh, 
Um, so they put the first um, legislations in place in 68, 69, and then developed it further into sort of in the 80s. Uh, the British Data Protection Act, one of the first came out in 1984. Um, but, you know, the, the internet really started taking off in the, in that, in the 90s. Um, and, and that's where the, the sort of cyber criminals came in and the marketers came in. Um, and, you know, that's when bad things started to happen. Um, online identity theft became a thing. It, identity theft had always been a thing, but now it was great because criminals could just um, go online and, you know, it's a, a remote crime with, you know, no evidence particularly. Um, so because privacy started to get um, a, a kind of a put to the back burner and there was basically a battle for the next sort of 20 or 30 years. Uh, we said before that in the cookies came along, further eroding privacy. So the European Union um, banged out their first data protection directive, which started to um, control things a bit more. But it was, to be honest, it was a fairly weak act uh, and no one really paid a huge amount of attention to it. And it kind of all changed uh, uh, with 9-11 in America because uh, um, the US uh, passed the Patriot Act. And if we've got anyone on from the US, they will know all about that. Um, and it basically gave authorities just carte blanche to gather data. They were tracking telephone calls. Um, they could go through people's private emails, all in the name of, of, of tracking potential terrorists um, and they kind of launched it to say that it was safeguarding citizens uh, but it just sort of ran roughshod over everyone's rights and and laws and, and kind of the US hasn't kind of recovered uh, from the the effect of the Patriot Act as you'll see uh, a little bit later okay um, I mean they also had another uh, it was the National Security Agency, um, which had part of the Patriot Act. They had the National Security Letters, um, and they were able to demand uh, phone records, bank account um, records, and even internet activities for any citizen without requiring a a, a court order. It's uh, you know it's crazy to think about it now. Um, then we went into you know it's still. Uh, bubbled along in the 90s and in the, in the early 2000s uh, you probably remember if you uh, remember all the controversy about uh, Facebook's news feed um, which basically gave up made you share a whole lot of your data with all the other users so people could find you and friends of friends and all that sort of stuff uh, Google Street View they sent their cameras around the world and then they found out that these cameras were catch capturing Wi-Fi passwords and even whole emails and all sorts of stuff um, and so Google got a, a fairly hefty fine for that one um, then Facebook had another dodgy privacy policy um, and so it goes on um, Google Buzz you probably don't remember Google Buzz because it, it got killed really really quickly um, it was kind of their, their sort of uh, online publishing uh, TV platform I think it was um, and um, they kind of linked it up with the, the rest of the privacy policy and it was it was a an opt out rather than opt in uh, so it caused a whole load of problems uh, and then good old Edward um, Snowden came along um, and leaked um, all the data to to about what the NSA was up to uh, and just what the authorities around the world were doing with your data uh, and that kind of changed the, the the sort of public conception of of you know what was happening with with their their rights and their data uh, and you know it caused a, a massive backlog backlash and slowly things have been sort of rolling back uh, and privacy is now being formalized uh, to a much stronger degree uh, and it you know provides a, a nice level playing fields um and then oh so the last one on the list was the the great one wasn't it from uh, uh, cambridge analytica who launched that um app that basically just captured everyone's details and information uh and i think 87 million facebook users uh, they got deep dive 
uh, information on and it was kind of rumoured that that was used to influence the outcome of the US election and the Brexit vote. Um, so, yeah, they uh, it's just sort of crazy stuff. And then recently you've you've also had uh, things about sort of uh, facial recognition um, and also things like the COVID app as well, um, harvesting data. So it's kind of an ongoing process. OK, um, so that's kind of like the, the, the background of history and so in response various areas of the world have developed their own sort of privacy laws um but it's really really patchy so what privacy laws you have to um concern yourself with are basically where you're based and where you do business with uh, and that where you do business be with can be from where your customers live where they reside um so if we were selling lots and lots of um uh, products to people in california we would have to um, abide by the californian uh, privacy laws um fortunately it's i think it's over fifty thousand people uh, that you have to have on your database from from the one area before you get signed up on it okay but the basically the the kind of the gold standard around the world um was the gdpr act in europe um um which was 2018 that that came out so it's not really not long ago uh and it caused um so much commotion um online and and everyone was rushing and with to um improve their systems and uh, point data control managers and have lots of forms ready um and so it did kind of ruffle everyone's feathers um and and there were you know threats of huge fines um i think it's like like three percent of of companies uh, total turnover that can be fined um so yeah if, if you know bp um made um, an error with their data it would cost them a hell of a lot of money um, which is kind of like why google and amazon and facebook have been fined so much over the last few years uh, because of gdpr um, allowances um, the uk had their own um, uh, they they were aligned to uh, gdpr uh, pro brexit uh, and now they have uh, we have the data protection act 2018 which is compliant and fully compliant with um, with GDPR. Um, but interestingly enough, we have to actually go through a, a five year cycle uh, to be kind of like reassessed by the EU uh, to make sure that our legislation is is up to scratch. Um, but essentially, the the EU and the UK versions of GDPR are, are seen around the world as the the gold standard of of privacy laws, the right balance. And uh, the rest of the, the world have got various different um, policies in place. Um, and you kind of have to look at what your individual uh, countries are, are doing. So in the US, there is no, no comprehensive federal privacy law uh, that covers consumers and, and covers um, online sales covers businesses you know there's there's little bits of acts of acts but there's nothing comprehensive um apart from, and so it's all down to sort of state legislation um so if you go to california california is the most progressive uh, state and they have the uh the, the copper act um down there um and they have uh, what ccpa and cpra um i did write down what they were but um Californian Privacy Rights Act, CPRA. Um, so they're really strong on privacy uh, down in, in California, and you have to be super careful. Um I say I think you have to you have to comply with it if you uh, if you're a business with more than $25 million in annual revenue or 50,000 contacts who live there. Um and then the only other states who've got these comprehensive laws are uh Colorado just starting next year, Connecticut, uh, Utah, Virginia, but various other states have their own sort of levels of laws. Um, so it can be quite difficult when you're when you're marketing in into America. But essentially, if you make sure you 
um, comply with GDPR, you're pretty much going to be covered. Um, you know, unless you're you're um, marketing specifically to uh, under 13s, uh, and that's where you have to be really careful with the that's all well, that's the Copper Act, the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. Um, which is uh, came in in 1996 in America. Um, so you have to, you know, you you would have to do a bit of research based on where your your target audience is, okay. Uh, and it's not too difficult to find out what the what the rules are um, in individual states, okay. Um, Brazil's got their own uh, fairly strong uh, data protection law. Uh, South Africa's got one. And then there's sort of various versions of data protection uh, laws in hundreds of countries. Um, but essentially, they all kind of look up to GDPR as the, the top standard. OK, so say so look after GDPR uh, rules and then you'll be covered, um, you know, 99 times out of 100 obviously if you're running a bigger business you're going to get uh, professional legal advice depending on the size of your business i just uh, a bit of disclaimer in there okay um so it is a kind of a, a bit of a mishmash right so what are the main principles of gdpr so it's really about um about data processing okay so what data is held and how um on on customers on individuals and what rights us as individuals have over our data so it's that balancing act between between the two okay so gdpr sets out these um seven main tenets okay that everything we do online in terms of privacy and, and data should be lawful fair and transparent uh, you know hey that's uh rightful uh, good aims uh, and a good foundation for for the act um then very clearly you've got this purpose limitation okay so any data you process or hold on an individual so um if you you give uh data when you fill out an online form when you buy something it, when you click on a website with with cookies you're giving over data all sorts of ways you're giving over that data when you sign up to uh, um, terms and conditions on a, a, a website or a, a chat room or facebook data's been moving around all the time okay so there is this limitation that the data that's collected by the company has to be used for that purpose. Okay, so I couldn't um, take your data uh, and then um, sell it on to uh, another company. Okay, or or mark or take it to uh, from one of our companies and start sending you emails about um, um, Seaview. Um, storage down in Folkestone or the songwriting academy they're all separate entities so your data has to be kept in that in that area so don't be te tempted to move things around data minimization uh, again really important that you know you only ask for the data that you need so when you're buying something from us uh, we just need to know your address your card details your location um, so that's for sort of security and, and IP checking and your email address and your name we don't need to know your date of birth your mother's maiden name your passport number your dog's name um it, we don't need it so we wouldn't have the right to collect it okay so you've got to make sure you're only collecting what the data you need okay you've only got to store that data uh, for as long as necessary um so um Generally, it's it's kind of thought of as being sort of six years um, for to keep data, but it depends on your policy. Okay, and we'll come to policies uh, a bit later. But it's something that you have to think about. You can't just have sort of paperwork on on businesses going back thirty years uh, without it being um, dealt with. You know, you can't have people's credit card numbers um, on paper forms. It's dangerous now. Um, Okay, so 
uh, integrity and confidentiality. So that's making sure that you've got secure systems. Uh, so when I've talked about using sort of Google Drive to hold your data uh, and Google Forms, and I've shown you about how to do two-factor authorization and protect your password, that's all about um, data security, okay? stopping uh, people getting hold of it because there are huge data breaches um, around all the time. Uh, and in previous sessions, I've talked about um, the have I been pawned site to check your email address uh, and how many data breaches you've been in. Uh, and there's new ones coming all the time. OK, and that's kind of where uh, the accountability comes in from GDPR, because um, bigger companies have a have to demonstrate that they are compliant with GDPR uh, and um, also they have to know what's what's notifiable event what's reportable okay so there's loads of good principles in there okay but they can be um, difficult to follow you know especially if you're you're new uh, into the environment okay so to try and figure this out you have to know about the data that you're doing. And one of the first processes you, you do to check your business is, to, is do a data audit. I'm gonna show you some, uh, some checklists for that, some pre-built checklists to help you with the data audit, okay? And you've got to make sure that you've had specific unambiguous consent from an individual, okay? Um, and so that's like like a tick box on a, a, a terms and conditions, uh, agreeing to a, a cookie policy. You know, you've got to have that evidence that people have ag agreed to their data coming across. OK, um, some of it is covered in sort of terms and conditions forms, you know, that by using this site, you agree that. OK. Um, and, you know, email marketing, we're going to get to. Uh, next week as well um, and why there are people opting into the list um, uh, mind you I'm going to mention that now because uh, one of the one of the hooks we had on our on our email for Saturday school this week it was down at the bottom I don't know whether you got to that bit uh, was that uh, last Tuesday it was announced that um, Halfords had been fined £30,000 um, by the Information Commissioner's Office in the UK. Um, so if, if you're abroad and don't know Halfords, they're a, a massive chain of uh, shops that deal with bicycles um, and all sorts of things like that, and cars and, and clothing. It's all sort of car parts and bits and pieces. Um, going for donkey's years, household name. Uh, and in lockdown in the in early 2020 uh, there was a government um, um, voucher that went around uh, that you could get 50 pounds towards having your bike mended um, so Halfords sort of started promoting this to every email address they could they could find in their in their lists um, because they were you know the shops were closed down because of lockdown so they wanted money to come in um, so unfortunately they um, they kind of sent out to every email they they address they had rather than to people who had just opted into their marketing so if you ever gone halfords you know when you go to the till um, they kind of ask you oh do you want us to email your receipt um, um and they were using that that data as sort of legitimate interest um to um send marketing emails to uh it's cost them 30 grand okay so um, it was a fairly simple thing for them to get wrong, uh, but they were kind of desperate and wanted the money. Okay, so it's very easy to fall into, into a trap and you get caught out. Okay, um, so uh, processing data, yep, obviously you need to comply with, um, you need to, if you need to process data to comply with the legal obligation. So if a, a court, you get a court order, you have to legally supply uh, that data across to uh, to them, so that's a, a, a legal process, a, a lawful process of data. Um, yeah, if you need to save somebody's life, you can <laughs> go into their phone or um, look up, you know, details on them to try and find out who they are or you know where they are. Um, so, so, so people could be uh, authorities could be checking your phone to find your location if there's a threat to life. Or the one 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 service uh, could try and um, um, track your phone or 
you know ambulance services try and work out where you are if you're lost or the lifeboat so there's some you know positives in there um yeah if you if you're processing uh, data necessary to perform a task in the public interest that kind of makes perfect sense the main issue is this last one um is the people saying that you can process data if you have a legitimate interest to process that data and that's the that's the sort of dodgy area okay uh and where people go most wrong in terms of what um legitimate interest is okay so i'm going to kind of we're going to have a look into that where you can find more in information about that okay but the main thing is you have to remember that the the fundamental rights and freedoms of the individual are the most primary concern so anything you want to do um with their data has to be um has to be seen through that lens okay so if you're not sure don't collect the data don't store it don't sell it to advertisers you know unless you can justify uh, that data in one of these for one of these reasons okay all right uh moving on okay so these are the really strong rights that gdpr gives individuals okay you and me when we're customers of places um okay so we've got the right to be informed about how our data is being used we've got the right to request access of our data um the right to uh rectify it to you know change it um the right to erasure which is just emailing someone and saying remove all your data on your systems for me i don't want you to have it um the right to restrict processing so you're not allowing uh, businesses to use data in in ways that you don't want them to uh the right to data portability so that's kind of like if you if you you can keep your account details and move it move it around um within a a business um or that can be for like health records as well uh, moving between doctors and dentists uh, you can certainly got the right to object and uh you've got the rights in relation to automated decision making and profile um <laughs> we'll look at where you can find out more information on that because if we go down that rabbit hole we'll be here for a lot longer and paul will be knocking on my door <laughs> Okay, um, so it's, it's quite an in-depth subject. Okay, um, so one of the things that you need to do as an, an, indiv an individual is kind of do an audit on your your own data and your processes. Uh, and there's a there's a link at the bottom of the slide here, um, which will take you to the ICO, uh, which is the Information Commissioner's Office for the UK. Um, uh, if I just put that in chat, because that's really quite a useful site for anyone uh, operating in the UK. Um, and it kind of asks you those those, those questions um, about your business. And you can um, click on each question and bring up extra information about what it's all about. OK, so it takes a little bit of learning. OK, but essentially you have to look at your business and work out, uh, you know, what how you hold people's personal data and what you're using it for do your people know you've got that data and understand how you use it um yeah so i'm not going to read through them you can see those on the screen okay um and you can see them on the on the form online okay uh but essentially if you are handling someone's um data okay so you're doing transactions uh you've got an email marketing list that you're sending out messages uh to if you've got a, a, a website with um uh, cookies or or um you've got login information on people uh members area then you need to protect yourself uh, and the first thing you need to do is you need to register um with the ico okay and it it costs about um 40 pounds a year um in the uk uh or if you pay by direct debit it's 35 quid um uh, if you're a bigger business a major business you're going to be paying more for a data protection fee okay but ordinary businesses uh individuals um 35 40 quid a year okay and it gives you 
some protection and it also gives your um your customers um um some comfort that you've actually paid attention to their data okay that you are you taking things seriously so you can use it in your in your in your marketing or in your in your details so people know and trust you okay so it's one thing that people really forget to do and it it's really really important okay covers you for so many things okay because if the ico come knocking on your door and say oh we've been looking at your marketing um uh, we've had some complaints about your marketing or we're just doing a random check uh you don't seem to be registered with us uh you're going to have the, the book thrown at you okay and they're um fairly limitless fines in the ico um so you don't want to muck around with them okay um right next so that we can move on okay so these are the areas that i've found uh, to find the uh, the best information okay so i said in the in the uk it's the um ico um dot org uh, the commission information commissioner's office it's a really good website and simple okay it's great for individuals to have a look at and also businesses uh, we'll jump out the slides in a moment and have a look at them okay in the eu uh, they've got their own website for uh, gdpr.eu i'll put some links in here in a minute and then there's a really useful site i found for this edpb.europa uh, um, you don't need to know what edpb are uh, but essentially, this is a list of all the um, information commissioners in each member country of the EU. OK, so if you're in France, you can find the link for your your information commissioner's office. OK, so it's it's useful stuff to know. Okay, If you're in America or anywhere around the world, um, you're just going to have to look up your own um, um, laws, I'm afraid, uh, for ICO because I can't cover every country. Okay, but know that they are there. So, um, what was I going to go on to next? Okay, next, that's next week. So, what we're just going to do is we're going to just drop out the slides a moment. Okay, and that's cool. Hopefully, you can see the ICO um, site that I've got on here. Yeah. Tell me you can see it. Go on, quick off the mark in chat. Someone needs to put, yes, they can see me, see my screen. Yes, thank you. It's all coming through, thank you. Are you ever so nervous when you're doing a webinar like this? Is anyone there? Is anyone there? Okay, um, so this is the um, Information Commissioner's Office. Um, it, it's really well set out. We've got, this is the whole section for uh, individuals, okay, uh, to find out what your own personal rights are. Um, and it's very easy for people to, to look at these individual um, sections and go, right, how do I ask her to get my data deleted? Um, how do I do this? How do I do that? So it makes it really easy for people to actually complain if they wanted to okay or how to deal with um, spam texts and nukes and calls and um all these sort of bits and pieces cctv is a, a big one with the ico if you've got cctv and a business you need to have a, a privacy policy okay um and and just especially for cctv so there's a lot of things to to cover in here uh and it's really well set out uh in terms of um the organizations let's just um i did say i was going to put the link in there there we are so you can have the ico link okay um and you see up the top they've got really simple processes for register uh, or pay a fee for the ico report a data breach or make a complaint about a company okay um so on the organization side um, there's loads of guidance uh, against the um, okay the UK general data protection regulations okay which is essentially what I was talking about with um, the uh, UK data protection act is kind of known as the UK GDPR 
Uh, so that's what this is about. Uh, these are the links to the, uh, the self-assessment forms. Okay, and uh, essentially, um, you should be going through um, some of these if you're doing direct marketing, to run this check. If you've got an issue with records management, um, do a checklist. Okay, uh, there is this extra link here for small business owners and sole traders, uh, which was the, uh, the one I had on the on the slide. Okay, um, so so you can just um, click on more information and it will tell you uh, have you thought about where the information comes from um, do you know how you, why you collect and hold personal data so it asks the right questions to you to go through and do that data audit and once you've finished um, it will then give you some recommendations on on what you need to to do next okay so this, you know, sole traders, this is if you're doing any business online, okay, or if you're doing any business, okay, if you've got a bricks and mortar shop, um, if you're taking money and transactions from people, if you're uh, um, running a club and filling out membership forms, all covered by the ICO, okay, um, so fantastic resource, go in there and um, and look around um you can see uh mike says does this apply if we sell on ebay and amazon um well it, if you keep the data within ebay then that's it should you should be okay because you're you're um you're covered by ebay but if you were um, if you were exporting your seller's information onto a spreadsheet onto your computer then yeah you're you're using that data um, if you were moving that data across out of ebay or as amazon to print postage labels or, or using that that your customers details to send them offers um, or email marketing then yeah you have to be registered with the ico and follow data protection rules okay um you know if you were just taking a picture of um um a lamp in your room and posting it on onto um ebay um then you would need to um you you wouldn't need to do it uh mike says if we, we only extract information for that purposes um i would recommend you doing a data audit okay um in whichever territories you are looking look at the you know if you're registered for for that then you've got a, a reasonable turnover um so therefore you're more of a target for enforcement so just make sure you're covered look into the legislation cover your ass is the bottom line okay um gdpr uh you get from uh, this site here uh, gdpr.eu let's do that uh drop that in there okay uh, and this you can go into here and have a look around and get more information about gdpr and how it affects you so if you are doing any business with anyone in the uh european union you need to um you need to be operating to their standard okay no matter what country you are in the world okay if you're um if you're advertising uh, to uh european community from america from brazil from guatemala from china you've got to comply with gdpr okay if you want to um to work in that area otherwise they will throw books at you uh because it's a really good revenue stream for the minute um, the French uh, ICO um, do random checks all the time on on businesses, uh, and you know they'll they'll go onto a, site, a website and have you got a privacy policy? Have you got this, that, and the other? Uh, and then they'll they'll either give them thirty days to sort their uh, processes out, or they'll hit them with a fine. It's great. Okay, uh, GDPR uh, checklists are up here. Okay, so this is where you can do an information audit. Okay, uh, and provide clear. Um, goes on and on and on. 
Okay. Um, interesting enough, I, there was real people remember when GDPR came out, there was a lot of talk about um, appointing data protection officers, and every company was scrambling to train data protection officers. And it was a big wheeze because there were expensive courses, this, that, and the other. But it actually turns out that you don't actually need uh, an official data protection officer unless you are a major, major processor of data, you know, Google, or Amazon, um, you know, big blue chip companies, um, uh, or whether uh, or whether you are, are a, a kind of like a, a public entity. Um, but it's good practice for big businesses to have someone responsible um, for that data. Uh, otherwise, they make mistakes and get fined. So they, you've got to have it in the forefront of your mind, but you don't know necessarily have to have um, a data protection officer okay so that's that site for gdpr okay uh and what was the other one was the um europa one wasn't it uh let's see if i can take that off the slide that i've still got over here as you know i've i've had it pre-opened for you there we are okay i'll drop that into here bang no, that didn't work. I oh, know it did. There we are. Okay. Uh, so really useful um, website um, to find out the Information Commissioner's Office, if you want to know it in Austria or Belgium, uh, Cyprus, Denmark. Yeah, it's all here. Okay. So useful site, Norway, all there. So good bits of information. Okay, so unfortunately, I can't show you every other country around the world, um, but um, Google's got you covered for that one. Okay, right. So um, that's it for my part now. Uh, let's just have a little look at questions. I saw one question uh, about uh, uh, what's the website you mentioned about you've been pawned. Uh, it's just... Uh, basically in here have i been pawned.com okay and you just stick your email address in here hopefully this one hasn't been in a breach at uh, gmail.com that's fine no nope, i'm fine on that one uh but if i put in a really old um dead uh, email that I've never used, uh, a, a BT internet email. It's probably come up with 17 or 20 uh, different data breaches that it's been in. Okay, so it's a really useful one uh, for to keep an eye on. Uh, who else have we got on here? Uh, I think someone uh, mentioned something about what's the cheapest free email auto responder? Is it MailChimp? Uh, uh, so I... Uh, I did a, a Saturday school a few weeks ago, um, comparing um, Mailchimp to uh, a few other um, mailer lights and things like that, because it kind of depends on what you want to need. Um, so I'm not going to, John, just pop back onto one of my previous Saturday schools um, a month or two ago. Um, any of those uh, online um, um John's asking about, he says, I don't see an auto unsubscribe in that email. Um, every marketing email that comes out from um, these big suppliers like MailChimp or ActiveCampaign, they won't send an email without an unsubscribe link. It's part of the, the process. Uh, so it should be in there for sure. Okay. Um, right. Who, any old questions? Uh, Danny says, I know you're coming back to email, but is it okay to send a first email to a business public email? Yeah, it's fine to send a, uh, a one-off email uh, to a, a business. Um, so if you were, were going through a list of sort of 20 potential uh, businesses for you to um, that might need your services in your local area, it's reasonable for you to be able to send them an email and say, Hi, I'm John. I do this. I'm brilliant. Um, can I help you with something? Okay. Um, but it's not um, legal to uh, then go to send that email to 
2,000 or 5,000 or 10,000 unsolicited. Okay, so you're getting into the the mass marketing um, of of the same message, and that's where you you fall into trouble. So you have to be um, the, there's kind of no um, defined limit that if you send over 100 emails, then you you're doing marketing. Uh, I know that uh, Gmail will will stop you if you send more than um, some like 500 messages a day. Uh, they'll they'll get they'll trigger their their sensors. Okay. Uh, Denise says, "What if you receive an email but can't find out how to unsubscribe? What can you do to stop receiving the emails? Uh, you complain to them. Um, there should be an unsubscribe link in any marketing email. Um, if there's no unsubscribe link and it's not um, sent as um, you know, not solicited, you're not opted in, you don't want to see it." just send them a message and say i do not want to receive your emails please forget me uh, okay so just go onto the ico have a look at that right to forget um you know if you if as long as it's not us that you want to complain about uh, you could go to um make a a small complaint you know but reason it's reasonable to give businesses a chance and go look can you remove my data um sometimes you can be on an email list uh, with four or five different email addresses, but they all go into one email inbox, your end. Uh, and that can be confusing for businesses because, you know, I've had people wanting to unsubscribe and they've given me one email address to unsubscribe from. And then they say, hey, you're still sending me emails. And it's like, well, you, you've probably got another uh, email uh, on my list. Let's find it. Okay. Um, so it's not always a straightforward process. All right. Okay. So next week, um, we're going to look at a little bit more of the the practical um, side of uh, um, of what you need to put on your website um, and how you cover your your behind. So we're going to look at things like privacy policies, cookie policies. Uh, we'll look at a website disclaimer. Do you need to have an accessibility statement? Uh, how you can generate terms and conditions on your website? All those sort of things to to cover yourself, okay? Um, and we'll try and do it in a way that you don't need to consult a solicitor and uh, spend zillions of pounds on it, okay? Um, so hopefully it'll be a bit more uh, uh, a bit more proactive session next week. <laughs>